It has been really exciting in that we have had to be creative. There's, there's been no other way around that. One of the biggest benefits of teaching in the hybrid mode is having smaller in-person class sizes. It, it provides an opportunity to really um, re-engineer the way that I'm doing things in the classroom. And it gives me a uh, sort of creative licensure to work on making things more engaging. Obviously still having that face-to-face -face time with students, um, that's something that I really thrive on and they really thrive on. That's an opportunity to build community and rapport, which is really important. And you can do that online, but this, this gives it just an extra element to it, um, especially for students who aren't especially comfortable with the online medium. It has been um, a challenge and an opportunity on all fronts to think about modeling for our teachers, modeling technology practices, modeling um, good pedagogy for our future teachers to see, modeling how to work together and flexible scheduling, um, taking advantage of making sure every moment that we're together in the classroom face-to-face -face is good quality instruction, what is the most essential use of the face-to-face -face time when we are actually bringing students into a classroom on campus. You can be on the students in a nice way in class way more effectively when there are 12 of them than when there are 35 of them. And so even though I get less instructional time with the students every week, I actually feel like I can directly engage with them, hear their questions. They have time to let their answers like sit and expand and to think about things before they respond, where in a class of 30 to 35, we don't have time. And another more aggressive student would be jumping in again, like things students don't get, would not have as much space and time to like percolate and think and get positive, like interpersonal feedback from me. The things I've seen in class are small, but I see good signs that students are learning learning the kinds of things that I want to do, or thinking the kinds of thoughts that I want them to think. And so this student learning, uh, to me, is opening up all of our minds about what the, the new workplace is going to look like in terms of the, the digital age. And I believe in terms of student learning, I, they are able to understand a level um, of what their professional life is going to look like in the future by what they're experiencing as students. And so uh, in, in that respect, it's been very exciting and I think uh, has positively impacted student learning. Compared to being fully online, um, you know, they also uh, get a lot out of the interaction with each other um, that they might not get as readily otherwise. Students don't have to worry so much about missing class if they're sick. So in the past, if a student was not feeling well, they wouldn't come to class, they would miss the work, they would miss the conversation and all that. Um, so at least now, if they're quarantining, even if they're not sick, right, or even if they are sick, if the flu or they have allergies or something like that, um, they are able to show up, follow the conversation, uh, ask questions, or at least listen to other people ask questions. It's not the same as being there and being a, a, an active participant, but it certainly has kept them from falling further behind. One thing that I started doing in week two that I've carried forward since, because I think it's been very helpful, is I'll open the class with a poll, and, and the poll always has two questions. It's kind of a, you know, vote kind of choose an answer question, and then an evidence question. So say the first one's the argument, the, the second one's the evidence. Why did you choose that or why do you believe that's the answer? Through our discussion board, they're able to still engage with students in the other section and they've commented on really appreciating that. So we, we have, we have our, our smaller face-to-face -face communities, but we're still part of that larger um, community of the, of the class too. Uh, when students can share their work, you know, sometimes when we have that face-to-face -face class, they're reluctant to share their work Right, but now they can share their screen and we can all see what everybody can see at the same time versus just them reading off of it. Um, that's been really neat um, in class uh, 
you know, we, we workshop some papers and to see them pull up an assignment from another teacher so that we can say, oh, here's what that teacher might be asking of you, or here's some ideas, and it allows other people to, um, to help that student, to coordinate our efforts um, to help them. So that technology from, of Zoom, uh, sharing screens and sharing our faces has been wonderful. When we have had our synchronous Zoom classroom, we've been able to invite a guest speaker and we're going to have a couple of other guest speakers for specific topics that we haven't been able to have before because they haven't been able to have the time to come. What I've tried to do with the discussion boards is offer them what I call three discussion starters that they can choose to respond to or they can create their own. And so the discussion starters are something that again will continue the conversation that's already begun and I'll, I'll kind of um, prime them for those at the end of our face-to-face -face discussion like we're going to carry this on this way so that it doesn't just feel like busy work. So we are still able to do what we've done before it's just different and some things are better some things are different some things are way more challenging but we are all learning so much more and thank goodness it's at a time that technology is so available 